Absolutely. And our next item is the uh, item number 29, which is to consider a report on community television plans and budget. We have a letter of the Director of Information <laughs> Services dated April 8th, 2013. Um, and we have Kevin Bowling uh, to give us the staff report. Good morning, Board. Good morning. Um, Kevin Bowling, Director of Information Services. With me today, um, we'll also have Lynn Miller, Interim Executive, Dinner, or Executive Director of CTV, and Kathy Bisbee, Executive Director of CMAP. I just want to make a few comments before, we, um, before I turn it over to them. Um, we're here today because we've been working pretty hard, but have still not been able to completely come to agreement with CTV uh, around the budget. We've made progress. I was trying to calculate a path forward where we would have one year pre-DIVCA and three years post-DIVCA money um, before the county would have to look at, at kicking funds in. That would have put us at, at about a $2,000 post-DIVCA revenue um, to give to CTV. The lowest budget that we have from them shows $291,000 per year. So I thought it was best to come back to the board, lay out all of the options, and then try to get some guidance on how to move forward. Public access in the United States has an incredibly difficult business model um, to move forward with. Everyone's impacted by a, an FCC judge or an FCC ruling which limits um, how you can spend um, PEG funding. So before they, and we've been, we've been held aside because of our local franchise. When we lose the local franchise, we'll be held to the FCC restriction, which says you can only use your PEG funding for capital expenses. That removes um, uh, almost 90% of the operating uh, budget for community TV. Uh, a lot of public access stations across the U.S. have just gone dark during this um, transition. It's also hitting the ones in California as they move through into DIVCO. Some of the things that you'll see in the board letter were the county and the city are paying most of the costs for public access. Um, we've asked uh, CTV to work with Watsonville and Capitola to even out the charges moving forward. If you take the current assumptions of their current spend that they're projecting and uh, assume no fundraising, it'll cost the city and the county about $150,000 each to keep a bare bone public access television on the air with the primary purpose of just televising government meetings. In discussions with the city, that's a hard number um, for them to take, and I think it'll be a hard number here too. Um, revenues are going to be exhausted earlier than expected. So in fiscal year 2015 and 16, the city and county will need to pay $134,000 out of general fund money unless they can succeed at fundraising and assuming our PEG revenue stays consistent. Our PEG revenue is based off of number of subscribers and it varies from month to month. Any option to keep the stations on the air really requires the purchase of the media server, a new media server using the PEG reserves. The new server is required because it will require fewer staff to run public access television. Kathy Bisbee can, can talk a little bit more about that. The new server will also allow us to archive our government meetings on the internet and be available on demand. Given the uncertain long-term future of funding for public access, staff cannot recommend a move to the tannery. The tannery will require an extensive amount of capital investment that would need to be recovered through a long-term lease, um, up to a 10-year lease for us to enter into it. Our PEG funding is dependent on the PEG channels being operating. If we don't operate the PEG channels, we lose the PEG funding, and then we'll be on the hooks for the lease. The best path forward for public access TV in Santa Cruz County, I believe, will require a partnership with one of the local colleges. To that end, Lynn, Kathy, and I have had primary discussion with uh, Cabrillo College. There's a possibility that CTV could relocate at the college and continue to find ways to work more closely together. Um, I should say these discussions are only at the exploratory, exploratory level. but. I think there's some promise there. 
given all the options laid out, um, I think that the only path forward, if you want to keep public access TV running in the county, is to enter into a one-year contract, put a one-year extension, you know, possibility of extending it one year after that, and monitor CTV's progress closely during this next year. We need to track fundraising. We need to track discussions with uh, Cabrillo and maybe even UCSC. We also recommend increasing their funding by 27,000 this year to help pay to help cover the transition costs, and purchasing the media server at $150,000. The media server will be relocated at the county uh, in our data center here, which will give some stability to it in the long term. I'll now turn it over to Lynn Miller, Interim Executive Director, and Kathy Bisbee, Executive Director of CMAP. And I'll be available for comments afterwards. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning, Board. Um, I want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin, Christine, and Ed for their support and help during this period of time. I know our budget did not match up, but, but they were very helpful in helping us try to get there. Um, I also want to thank uh, CMAP's Executive Director Kathy Bisbee and Kathy Bisbee's Board of Directors because they've been also very helpful in this process. Our budget does reflect some changes in, in the course of the way T CTV is going. I've got to tell you, I have members of our staff who have been there 18 years who will be laid off through this process. I have uh, additional staff that have been there 18 or, more year, or, or less years that are also going to be cut back in hours. It wasn't a budget that we just took lightly, um, and I know we're still a ways off, but I want, I want you to understand that, that we have made efforts to, to um, bring this budget into alignment. In addition to that, I froze two positions this last year in order to um, accommodate um, CMAP being with us for the last several months. While both uh, CTV and CMAP believe that option four is the best option, I don't think that's a surprise to you. Um, we understand the county staff's recommendation for option three. The key to either of these options is CMAP's continued engagement and expertise. And if your board moves forward, CTV and CMAP will continue to work with county staff to make changes necessary. While there is disappointment that the tannery is no longer available, it is not a barrier to us moving forward. We have been in discussions with Cabrillo for some months now and we believe that is a solid option and we can forge a model that provides for public access and education. So our objective from this period on will be sustainability. It will require unique Santa Cruz type collaborations where each is benefited in doing so at least cost to jurisdictional general fund. Development will have to include long-term solutions such as the efficiencies provided by new technology, strong working relationships, cost-saving measures wherever possible. Our board of directors is supportive and understand the nature of the new reality for CTV in order to survive as a viable resource to this community. It is my commitment personally to stay on through the month of August to help through this transition with CMAP. And I'll turn this time to turn it over to Kathy Bisbee and I'll also answer any questions you have later. Kathy. Good morning. I want to uh, also take the opportunity to thank CTV and the county staff for bringing our team into this project um, to collaborate on how we can really support your goals for the continuation of community media services in Santa Cruz County. So thank you. I, I want to emphasize again that we are not just retooling. We are literally going to have to reinvent community television. And that is something that CMAP has been taking a leadership role on nationally. I'm on the Alliance for Community Media Board nationally, and it is something that we are talking with media centers all around the country about. And many of them are looking to our model. Um, in fact, I'm going to be uh, presenting a session at the ACM National Conference on post-apocalypse PEG. So how we can reinvent and move forward in these very challenging times where we have very new funding realities. This is a process that involves cultural change, but it's also a business development process. And for nonprofits, business development takes time, and it takes a lot of talking about all the details between all of the different partners in the partnership. So I would like to advocate, also not surprising, for option four. 
my board um, was very concerned when we received the board packet that in option three, CMAP was not explicitly mentioned. So if your board does choose option three over four, we would like to know that your intention is to have us involved in this project explicitly. We're committed, our team is committed to streamlining CTV's operations and bringing its technology infrastructure up to date and creating efficiencies. We're committed to a new location that is more functional under the new funding realities, whether that be Cabrillo or some other location. That we create a fund development plan and develop new fee-based services. Now, I, I do have to say, moving to an educational institution, we have 10 years of working uh, at Gavilan College in Gilroy. We have a very good working relationship with them. We're now at the new high school, Christopher High School in Gilroy. It's a fabulous partnership. We had our opening on March 7th. And um, we've gotten a lot of community support for that. We have a lot of volunteers. One of the digital media instructors, in fact, is assigning all of his students at the high school in his classes, all 70 of them, to do community service hours in our television studio. So obviously, the same partnership opportunities and community service opportunities and internships would also apply to an educational institution such as Cabrillo. However, there are some limiting factors with that decision as well. It really defines the kind of organization that we would become, which I'm excited about becoming an organi educational organization, but it does eliminate other, potentially eliminate some possibilities in terms of how we could come up with operation funding through commercial enterprise. There may be opportunities there that we don't know about yet, and I'm looking forward to exploring that. Uh, we are hoping that you will approve the new server and uh, our work with the Denver Open Media Project. We were just there. Nick, my, uh, Nick Brandt, my IT director, and I were there uh, along with uh, the uh, folks at Denver to really learn their system. And we were able to ask questions. We spent about three days with them and got a lot of great information. Or I'm really impressed with how they've been able to run their operations with one and a half staff and about 100 interns. So we know that's a capacity that we already have, uh, thanks to the staff at CTV and at CMAP. So I think that's something we can also follow their model and make work here in Santa Cruz. I do think that it's going to take us two years to really turn this around. We're, we're not starting from, from the, the, the start line yet. So we've got to get CTV up to speed first with these new technology purchases and with an infrastructure that's going to be the foundation for them to be self-sufficient and DIVCA compliant. So I imagine most of that work is going to happen in the next six to nine months. And then we can move forward in making them DIVCA compliant. So I'd like to urge you to consider a partnership with us for the next two years. And I hope that we will earn your trust and have earned our, your trust moving forward. I want to thank you for your time and consideration, and I look forward to continuing our work together to protect free speech, government transparency, parency, digital literacy, and job training programs, and supporting our nonprofit schools and community groups through the amazing resources that are still available and we hope will continue to be available at Community Television Santa Cruz. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a helpful uh, collaboration of all um, people's interests, and I know you all share the same goal of uh, making community TV remain part of this community, so appreciate that. Any questions from board members? Yes, Supervisor Leopold. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I appreciate the presentations, and I think that the, the comment made that this is a, uh, a reimagining of community TV is, is uh, is probably pretty accurate. You know, the, the, the sort of the destruction of the ability for local government to be able to negotiate directly with the cable companies have created this uh, situation where uh, we have to operate in a different funding environment. I, for one, am um, very interested in pursuing the uh, collaboration with Cabrillo, not only because I served on that board for eight years before I became a county supervisor, but I think um, a model that involves uh, the education of young people um, into the field uh, and also help leverage both uh, not only the students for their participation but the faculty at Cabrillo um, is a way to uh, stretch the, the few dollars that we will have as far as possible and, and so I, I know I've had some conversations with uh, folks over Cabrillo and there's real interest and I'm hopefully hopefully that'll be able to move forward. Um, I think uh, that uh, it's, uh, it's, maybe it's not surprising to hear that we're not at the starting line yet and that it's a two-year process. 
Uh, this board uh, has uh, expressed time and again uh, our support for community TV and public access in Santa Cruz County. And while we have to reimagine what it's going to look like, um, it, it's, uh, it's been challenging to, to try to get the, um, everything in sync. And I'm very happy to see this uh, collaboration between CMAP and CTV uh, going forward. And uh, I think the purchase of this new media server is a good idea. I like the idea that it's going to be here at the county so, so it can access um, both the security and the access to the internet uh, that uh, we have here. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I do support uh, the option three of the, of the one-year contract. Uh, uh, with the one-year extension, I would uh, suggest that we put explicitly that we're looking to do this with CMAP uh, because uh, we, we've made that investment so far, and I think it's uh, right now uh, it's important to continue that and express that uh, to the other board. Um, you know, the, uh, I can understand also the frustration with not doing a two-year contract. That uh, The board has also tried to push community TV to, to move forward with this uh, change in um, uh, situation. And uh, every time we have a, a deadline, it does seem to move things along. So uh, that style seems to have worked. And so having that, uh, that, that continually there seems to make some sense, especially as we manage our way through this transition. So. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Supervisor Friend. Well, I appreciate Supervisor Leopold's comments. I also agree that option three works because it also doesn't preclude a second year, whereas the option four requires a second year. And I don't believe that it's fiscally prudent to, to uh, give up all the reserves at a point where we don't know what is really going to happen. So I, I believe that uh, progress has been made. I have confidence that if you can continue to show progress in the next 12 months, there's nothing that's precluding an additional uh, movement for an additional 12 months beyond that. <clears throat> So I'm comfortable with option three as well, and I appreciate your comments, Supervisor Leopold. Supervisor Leopold. Uh, I guess one other thing I just wanted to add, it was surprising to me when I read this report about the inequity in terms of the government, local government funding of uh, community TV. Um, when the, I looked at it as sort of a 60-40 split, that the, the city and county uh, have about 60% of the hours on TV, um, and the cities of Capitola and Watsonville have about 40%. But the, the, the funding is more like 90 and 9 or 10 or something. And uh, to me, uh, I don't know what is harder, coming up with a business plan that, uh, that will uh, uh, bring in new commercial services or grants um, or getting money out of local government to pay for the services that are on TV. They're both pretty hard. But I think that, that, that we can no longer subsidize uh, the work of uh, our neighboring local governments, that they should, re they should be as committed to this system um, as we are, um, and they need to pay for t their way if we want to broadcast uh, their meetings as well. I think that's important to the public. It should be important to those institutions. And the amount of money isn't, isn't great, um, but it will make a big difference in the bottom line of community TV in the future. I have a question for Mr. Bowling. Um, I know the city of Santa Cruz uh, one of the things you mentioned here is streaming uh, the meetings on the internet. And I know the city of Santa Cruz, I think, presently does that, correct? Yes. You, you sort of identified the cost of doing that. They also are, have their uh, meetings on uh, TV, right? Right. So they do both streaming and on TV. Right, yes. Would it be possible for you to return at budget time, your department to re return at budget time with the pros and cons of streaming? Uh, government meetings because I know that there's a number of people who are no longer subscribing to TV and get their um, entertainment on uh, uh, if you can call it government <laughs> meetings entertainment <laughs> on, uh, what you say. on the <laughs> internet and I'm, I'm interested in at least being able to explore that uh, separately from uh, this item so I'd appreciate if, if maybe we can incorporate that request in right I can yeah I can do that and there's there's a several services that do it we've been talking to all of the services um, <laughs> It really comes down to whether you want to move towards a full agenda management system, which would be my recommendation, because uh, a full automated agenda management system that will have video streaming as part of it is going to give you a much better picture of, of where you where you should be. And I, I can come back, um, I'm not sure when, um, when you would want me to come back with that. I was suggesting budget time, but. Yeah, uh, I could come back, budget hearings okay. with. Uh, with the numbers of what that would be. Okay. 
We'll wait to see what the motion is like. But Ms. Bisbee, do you have a comment on that? Yeah, I just want to mention the new server that we're purchasing, if, if you approve it today, would actually stream live to the internet. Um, and it's, it's actually a fraction of the cost of Granicus, which is what most of the cities around the country are using. It's about $35,000 a year for that management system, whereas the new server that we're purchasing already has that built in and is, is probably four or $5,000 a year to manage that aspect. And we are currently already streaming government meetings live on the internet, just as an FYI. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Should, uh, yeah. Mr. Yes. I appreciate the uh, comments of Supervisor Leopold, too, but if uh, you could come back, um, when you do come back with some of those figures, um, tell us what would be the breakdown or our responsibility if uh, all local governments paid their, shall we say, fair share of time and, and so forth, so we can get a, a picture of how much that would, if that was uh, equalized, let's say, uh, that uh, we would know what we'd be paying under those circumstances. I I should say, my, my one concern with this one is when we go out and hit the jurisdictions, it's trying to, and Lynn will be doing that with Kathy, it's trying to find the pain point at which they'll say, I don't care. I'm just not going to pay to be on um, TV. So, um, but we'll work through those numbers and yeah. see and try to see how much more we can get out of them. Okay, I, I fully appreciate that. I just, it would be good for for me to know, I think, for us to know. Thank you. Okay. Now, are there any members of the public that would like to uh, comment on this item? We welcome your comments at this time. We have about three minutes to say good morning. Otherwise, it'll be good afternoon. So, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, uh, Chairman and Supervisors. I'm Keith Gedger. I'm the board chair of Community Television. As you know, television is all about being seen. Community television is how we see what's going on in our local community. Community television is how we see what's going on right here, right now, with the Board of Supervisors. Today, I'd like to talk a little bit about something that isn't seen. First, I would like to thank Kevin Bowling, Lynn Miller, and Kathy Bisbee and their staff for the incredible amount of hard work that has gone into getting us to where we are today. In particular, I want to recognize the commitment and dedication of community TV staff, even in the face of this uncertainty. Without their support, we would not be on air today. Here today, you see a number of the members of the Community TV Board of Directors. The CTV Board has voted unanimously to endorse these efforts before you. We have a strong and capable team. I also want to thank the many members of Community TV who continue to support our efforts. Our members spotlight the many talents in our community. Without any compensation other than the joy of the act itself, these members and producers contribute many hours of their time and talents each and every week to keep us informed about the amazing things going on all around us, which we would never see without their efforts. And finally, I would like to talk about something not technically seen and that is vision. Based on our continued work with the county and CMAP, we have a vision for the future. That vision includes providing opportunities for the youth of our county to learn digital media job skills. It includes helping all of the many nonprofits who serve our community by getting their message out. It includes keeping all of our county residents informed about what is going on in their government. It includes all the many artists who reside in our county, and it gives them an opportunity to display their talents. And finally, it includes you, the supervisors, having the vision to keep Community TV alive. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else who would like to address us on this item? Community TV, this Marilyn Garrett is the station I watch most, and um, it has such a variety of programs in terms of music, environmental information, films, interviews, and uh, I think our community would be lacking without this public service. I want to uh, submit for the record uh, something that's titled 
warning against adverse health effects from the operation of digital broadcast television stations. This is from German doctors to the President of the United States. It's from February of 2009. It's to the Congress members and to the citizens. The warning. Uh, in the U.S., digital broadcast, because we rarely hear, we hear about the awe of all this modern technology, um, how wonderful it is, but we rarely hear about the adverse health effects. In fact, I believe that something should be proven safe before it's permitted on the market. That's kind of contrary to capitalism. But that's how it should be for our public health and well-being, which you are sworn to uphold. So it says, in the U.S., digital broadcast TV is scheduled to start operating in February 2009. We, we write to you today because we wish to save you from the significant negative health consequences that have occurred here in Germany. In Germany, analog broadcast TV stations have gradually been switching to digital broadcast signals since 2003. The switchover first took place in metropolitan areas. In those areas, however, the radio frequency exposure in public places as well as at home continued to increase at the same time. As a result, the continuing declining health status of children, adolescents, and adults in urban areas could not be attributed to any single cause. On May 28, 2006, two digital broadcast TV stations went on the air, and it names the districts in German, which until recently had enjoyed rather low mobile phone radiation exposure levels. Within a radius of more than 20 kilometers, the following symptoms um, that occurred abruptly were reported. Constant headaches, pressure in the head, um, drowsiness, sleep problems, inability to think clearly, forget, forgetfulness, nervous tensions, irritability, tightness in the chest, rapid heartbeat, shortness of breath, depressed mood, total apathy, loss of sympathy, burning skin, etc. They had to take people to mountain areas to feel Thank better. You, so I'm going to submit this uh, for Thank the record. You. Problems with digital TV. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else who would like to comment? Mr. Hall. Good afternoon. Chair Coonerty and members of the board, I'm here as a representative of the City of Santa Cruz. I serve on the Community TV Board, and I just want to endorse your actions today. I think you're caring about this public resource, and I hope we find a way forward. It's a very difficult path, and the transition has begun, and I think it's a, a worthy cause we're working on. Kevin's done a really good job, referred to all sorts of details on this, and uh, I just hope through this we can come up with some system that allow this type of access to continue, because I too watch community TV, because it's one of the few channels I see things that relate to local activities, and I think it's important we keep that ability in our community. So thank you so much for your time and effort on this. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for Discussion, deliberation, yes, Supervisor uh, Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'd be prepared to move the recommended actions uh, on uh, with option three uh, as the choice uh, with a specific mention of uh, giving some recognition uh, in writing to CMAP, no, letting them know that we're interested in continuing this partnership uh, with CTV um, uh, and also returning at budget hearings with information uh, both about how to get our uh, meetings uh, streaming on the internet um, and uh, uh, financial information about what it would cost for each city uh, if, uh, uh, if they were to pay their fair share. I think that ca captured it. So there's a motion. Second. Second by Suresa Friend. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Again, I know it involves a lot of hard work, and I appreciate we've come this far.